Sorry, I'm just too excited. I'm too excited to be I know. Back. It's really bizarre. <laughs> Hold on, what have I got to do? Right. Hello, welcome to Photography Out Loud. My name is Paul Davis, and as always, I'm joined with my colleague, Joel Lonebone. How are you doing today? You okay? <laughs> How did you say my surname? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that long that you've used my surname. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been really ages and bizarre, ah, yeah. so amazing to actually be back uh, yeah, doing, uh, doing our, our live stuff. 100%. I've, yeah, it was weird because we're setting up because obviously we can't like be on the same camera because of the current yeah. regulations and stuff. And uh, it was weird getting all the settings right for the cameras, setting them up again. Um, yeah, but it was good. It feels good. And like going through what we're going to talk about, over the next well half an hour and the throughout the year and onwards yeah yeah i'm really excited for, for, for once for once in our time uh, we've actually again not making sense um <laughs> we've actually planned ahead as well and um, Paul hasn't changed Paul and i don't make any sense <laughs> david uh, Yeoman will be happy we have planned ahead though we do actually know yeah. what we're going to be doing next episode and the episode after and the episode after that so we've got um, a whole google document yeah it's great it's brilliant the suppliers may vary that, that like there's other people <laughs> that provide documentation software but but we we do like google docs it is it, it is. is one of our it is one of we our are favorite fans, things. To be fair. yeah so oh yes. we've got some so, comments paul we got some comments coming through. Yeah. That's brilliant. Our first comment was Mr. Yeoman. Hey. Hello and welcome to 2021. Hello, Thank you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, I hope you're ready to tell us when we're wrong, especially later on. Um, this will be yeah. right in your wheelhouse, David. Um, yeah. And we've got you... Steve. Steve says, fantastic to see you both. Happy 2021. Great to see you too. Um, Steve, we've uh, we've missed all the comments and uh, seeing everybody uh, pop up in them so we're, we're yeah, and it's, for 2021 it's it's good that we've just slided it at, at, in january granted it's the end of january. <laughs> we're scraping into january <laughs> so um because i think at oh. some point we could say we'll be back in january so we yeah. we didn't we didn't lie and I, I knew yeah. we were a bit later than than what we were going to say but yeah you know <laughs> bizarre even 2021 has started off weird so we got there in the end um, yeah, no. Paul, Gary. Hello, Gary. Um, Paul's hair has changed. <laughs> well, Paul, isn't that a story, Paul, about getting ready for Paul? What, oh, what's different you know about what's, doing it, your hair, Paul? It, Paul, I just called you Paul. Uh, Paul for Paul. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it has changed, and um, I have a, I, I've got a mirror <laughs> right next to me because my hair's You've been got there before. I said. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been in a hat for the last month and it's it it's just come out of come out of the hat and yeah this this is what happens and yeah i i look like someone's just like popped on a, a little something a do you know what it reminds me of now i've thought about it because you said it looked like a toupee earlier what it looks like is um you know like a human sized lego um hair yes you know like yeah. when you can change their hairstyles that's what it is that's what it looks like yeah it reminds me of that no. i'll call you I'll, um I'll... what's his name from uh the lego movie oh, oh you know what my daughter would kill me now emmett yeah emmett you're right you're right is emmett <laughs> um, taco tuesday and everything is awesome <laughs> everything is so, awesome uh, good evening from John Roberts. Good evening, John. Hi, John. Uh, good good evening. Um, Craig. Hello, Craig. Uh, Gerard way in the house. I'm not sure. There might need I, some explanation for that. Is it because his hair looks that way? Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's a singer off a band. And I'm just trying to think yeah. which one. Are they an emo um, band by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why is it your hair and always gets you comments it's so funny all uh, uh, right ian says hi paul and joel good to have you back hi ian thank you um it's great to see you as well ah uh, there we go craig says my chemical romance there we go <laughs> yeah that's so true so true um well wow, throwback much um Snowden curtis as always it's good to see your smiling faces great to see yours as well you've got a great profile picture um 
Craig says, very emo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <clears throat> yeah. Can I see your, the colour of your fingernails? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Yeah, Tina says, hello, guys. Hello, Tina. Um, Gordon says, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon to you. Oh, dear. It's cute, by the way, what every grown man wants to be called. <laughs> I can live with that, especially Sam. from Craig as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. And then evening, guys, from Gary Jones. Hello, Gary. Hello, Gary. Good to see you. Um, wow, exciting times. Hopefully, once the situation has changed for the better, we'll be doing more workshops with Gary again. Uh, and hopefully we can get to places like Slimbrenig and other places where there's great wildlife because it'd be great to get out with... Uh, uh gary again um and lots of our other uh photographers that we've done workshops with and we had plans for the past couple of years so hopefully we can get those uh back on track as yeah. well get, get out and, and about interesting that uh i don't know whether we're going to mention it in the news thing but um uh, gary's uh on his page as well is uh, now going live on on his facebook channel as well um uh, in in partnership uh with someone if you can send a link in the thing gary just so i've got all the information um and then obviously um that's that's going to be fantastic as well so i know gary's been uh uh speaking about that with us as well so very much looking forward to seeing that so but yes we have lots of news and um, there have been uh lots of different things that have come out since uh, since we've been away uh, but more importantly uh, our news uh as well uh, is that uh, by popular demand uh, we are going to be doing some uh, online training absolutely free on photography out loud uh, and it's starting in this lesson uh, this lesson this session this live um, <laughs> that we're going to be doing and um, it's going to we be need, happening like, hands up uh, emoji 100%. or celebration emoji we, we're still going to be doing photography out loud as this silly little thing that me and Joel do together because you know apparently some of you like it don't know why um so we're still going to be doing this and then it's going to break into a session sort of maybe midway through but there'll be uh, a clear sort of gap moving into the next section uh, and also with the training what we'll be doing is we'll be putting them up separately onto our YouTube channel as well so if you wanted to go back and watch the training at any point uh, without seeing the sort of the news section, uh, as it were, of Photography Out Loud. You can do that easily uh, on our YouTube channel. So they'll be coming up on there as well. So, but yes, over to uh, what's what's come out, Joel? What's What's been, oh, what's been quickly, happening? Quickly, quickly, Gary says it's the Eagle Reintroduction Wales. There we go. Bit of a mouthful, but um, I, yeah. Check. So go to Gary Jones's um, Facebook uh, page. Uh, Gary, feel free to put the link in the comments below or to the side or wherever they might appear. Um, yeah. And, oh, John Roberts has got the uh, the rock on hand symbol. <laughs> Excellent choice. Um, oh, and Yvonne's got hand clapping. I like that emoji hey. as well. That's good times. Um, so, yeah, back to what Paul was asking me. Um, news. Um, we've had some uh, exciting news to start January 2021 off with. Um, well, towards the end, because <laughs> it's only happened this week. Um, so Sony have unleashed the beast that is a, that is the A1, which is yeah. like a 50 megapixel monster. Uh, the price is pretty high too, but um, definitely going to be worth it by the looks of things. Looking forward to get our hands on that in the future. But yeah, it's going to be a bit of a monster from all um, reviews that we've been reading so far um so yeah we'll we'll be excited to uh see that in action yeah. and they've Super also brought out a new... <clears throat> yeah and um they've brought out um a new phone as well the xperia that will connect as like a monitor oh ah, yeah yeah so, yeah <clears throat> that's going to be interesting to see as well um, and how that develops going forward hopefully other camera manufacturers and other third-party phone <laughs> devices will be able to do the same because would make life a lot easier, especially for video work, to be able to use your smartphone to uh, compose videos and use it as a monitor. So that'll be very exciting. Also, Fuji um, have unleashed quite a, quite a deluge of new products. They've got 
Uh, the GFX 100S, if you don't know what the GFX is, um, GFX 100 was the 102 megapixel uh, monster that they uh, released with um, in body image stabilization. So, which is fantastic for uh, medium format because medium format is not very forgiving when you uh, move it around too much. Um, and the quality is stunning, isn't it, Paul? Like to be able to see that much detail. Um, and be able to zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom. And we've we've had a picture of um, a peacock feather, didn't we? And you could just yeah. keep zooming and you could count each and every single one of the, I think they're called barbs of the uh, yeah. feather. Gary will be able to tell me if I'm right or wrong. Um, and the way they stick together. And it was just amazing. You could count them individually. And the color was fantastic as well. So, but it was quite a big camera, wasn't it? It was like as big as my face. Um, yeah. But now, apparently, it's smaller than a 5D <laughs> with a medium format um, sensor in it. So that'll be cool to see that when it um, comes into store. And they brought it's out just, a lens. Oh, sorry. It's, it's, it's bonkers, though, isn't it? Because it, it's coming within to that realm of, you know, um, and they've added what has come from, like, the S10 as well. So, you know, with the, the PASM sort of settings on it as well. So, obviously, Fuji have still left sort of uh, the, the 100 and the 50 uh, in the more traditional styling, which is absolutely awesome. But they've, you know, with this newer generation sort of coming in, um, but it's just having something that sort of feels, you know, like a DSLR, but you're shooting 102 megapixels is... It's just mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. So it is. It'd be uh, interesting to see how many people want to go into medium format from thirty five mil full frame now that the camera yeah. is a bit smaller. Um, also, it takes the uh, the battery that the XT four takes, which shows you how yeah. small it is. Uh, so um, it, it's it's everything in the right direction, isn't it? Definitely, it's going to be interesting, and um, and we've already had quite a lot of pre orders, so. Um, we look forward to seeing that when it comes in. Um, GF80. You, so, you better order one. <laughs> yeah, quickly. <laughs> um, and the 80 mil for it as well, 1.7 aperture. So on medium format, that's going to be super shallow um, mm. because everything gets more shallow on medium format. So I think it's the, it's the widest aperture medium format autofocus lens ever made or something like that. So <laughs> that'll be interesting to see how that, um, stands up and then they also released the xc4 now the xc4 um is an interesting one because if anybody knows what the x100 series is and um, it is what a personal favorite kind of series of cameras ever um and they've actually made the xc4 um the same size and style as an x100 v but you can change the lens so instead of it being a fixed 23 mil f2 you can choose whatever lens you like. And they do a kit with the new 27 millimeter weather sealed uh, lens. So that'll be an interesting choice because I would like to get my hands on that because whilst I love fixed aperture, if it's the same size and stuff, it might change my mind. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, uh, time will tell. But yeah, that looks like a, a great one and it'll be great for people who wanna do video and street and things like that because it's small, but you can, put the uh, screen all the way around so you can have um, selfie videos. And then for a lot of Fuji customers who really, really wanted this uh, like walk around zoom, the 70 to 300 has now been released. So, yeah. and that also takes the teleconverters, the 1.4 and the two times uh, from memory. Both of them. I think so. Um, I might be wrong. So I'm sure somebody will tell me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, it makes a big difference um, that, that I've bought that lens out. Cause now if you were, uh, on the 55 to 200, but you wanted that extra reach, but you didn't want to go to the, the Beastie 100, 400, then the 7300 is going to be a compact yeah. lens. So we've already had a lot and, of pre-orders on that one as well. So. And also as well, if you've if you've been in, you know, been in photography, doing photography for a while, then, you know, the 70 to 300 has always been like a, a sort of, you know, a, a key sort of lens. You know, you always used to have, like your, your standard lens and then your next lens would be yeah. something like a, a 70 to 300 you know yeah. so we're very used to that sort of uh, that length as well and i think it's uh there must obviously it's physics involved and all that sort of stuff but it, it's always the case that uh the lenses stay reasonably sized as long as they don't go over that 300 mil 
So, you know, it's a reasonably sized lens. As soon as you go up onto things like the 100 to 400 volt <coughs> Fuji, which is an awesome lens, but it does start to get a little bit big and it does start yes. to get a little bit heavy, where the 70 to 300 is going to obviously give you that extra reach, but still mm -hmm. keeping it uh, within a sort of carry around sort of style and something that you can have, you know, along with you on a day's trip, as it were. Yeah, it'll go well along with something like the 1855 or the 16 to 80, being able to yeah. have those couple lenses. I think it'll be a good, good shot for sure. Um, I'm just double checking. I don't think that one is a weather sealed one. Um, so I just saw Tina, sorry. Uh, Tina, I don't think it is weather sealed that lens. Um, I, I guess the size would have had to get quite a lot bigger and the price would have gone up yeah. quite a lot. So, but um, Helen, hello, Helen, and the, uh, the dancing cat girls. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul mentioned you had uh, you had made a purchase, and you said, "Helen, do you remember Helen, the one with the uh, the cat girls?" One, I was yeah. like, "Yeah, how could I forget?" I referred to, uh, I said, "You know, Helen, dancing cat." <laughs> oh yeah, that was <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> don't even remember your surname anymore. It's just Helen dancing cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Kimberly says, "Ooh, I'm not sure what you're ooing at." Um, so let us know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's all the news. So yeah, we're back online, which is great. Oh, also some other news, Paul, which is amazing. Yes. Um, Cambrian Photography, not who's that? Not you, that? and not me, but Cambrian, what? the business, oh, yeah. okay. seventy-five years old this year. We were you born in nineteen forty-six. <laughs> so. Yeah, 1946, goodness me. Um, is anybody else 75 years old watching this video? Don't have to tell us if you are, really. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so we are working on some ideas. Uh, we're going to do some limited edition merch. And um, hopefully, towards the end of the year, if uh, if it's safe to, we will be having um, uh, a celebration of some sort. Um, even if we have to do a socially distanced one in the middle of the field, maybe, I don't know. Hopefully uh, life will be a bit easier to see people by then. Um, but yeah, 75 years, that's a fantastic age. Crazy, um, crazy. I don't know what, I don't crazy. know what the thing is. Do we get like a diamond or a gold thing? I don't, I don't know. know, sapphire? And I don't know. What, what we, it's, uh, so it's, yeah, it's three generations. It would, we would probably call it, wouldn't we? Cause we yeah. went from, Went from Dick Duncalf to Mark Duncalf, and now we're running under the flag of, of Sarah. So yep. yeah, it's like three generations of uh, of, of owners over seventy five years. Um, so it's just showing like the dedication that sort of well every every aspect to whoever owns Cambrian is is you know is really sort of putting in. So um, and uh, yeah, it's been. I'd like, I was going to say a crazy 75 years then, but obviously I haven't experienced the full 75. So, yeah. That one looking <laughs> Otherwise, <really good. laughs> yeah. What cream do you use and why aren't you a billionaire? Um, yeah. And yeah, so we'll see what we can do. Any suggestions, pop them in the comments or, or let us know and uh, we'll work on some more ideas. Um, but yeah, we look forward to being able to celebrate properly. Um, Right, some more comments before we move on. Um, Helen uh, Dancing Cat says, it arrived today, aha, <laughs> Dancing Cat, um, crying face emoji. Um, <laughs> that's crying, um, smiling face emoji, I should clarify, yes. she's, not, she's not hopefully sad about that. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy it, Helen. Uh, give us a shout if you need any help. David Yeoman, there we go, here we go, one sec. It is weather seal. The first hashtag you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, is it? Why did they not put WR in the? Oh, they did. Sorry, my bad. I didn't read it close enough. Sorry, David. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kim says uh, selfie screens on a video. Ah, oh, yes, it is very good to have the um, the selfie video capability, which is more and more important in our day and age, given that everybody wants to be a YouTube star or take selfies so and it's great as well for this sort of thing like where you can yeah. be where you can see the setup so uh, yeah, no, tina says good. lol and we age well there we go yeah paul so uses good. just for men i think <laughs> on his hair and his beard <laughs> yeah yvonne's up for a party good times good times 
Um, Ian says yes. Does that? I, I'm not sure what that refers to. I, I'm not going to suggest what it might refer to, but um, yes, we'll leave it there. I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy birthday, Cambridge. Thank you, Steve. Um, we expect lots of cards. That's what we should ask for. Cards. Yeah. Or like I think, electronic. I think we, will, we will set a birthday day, I think, later on in the year, won't we? So, because we, we normally do it around uh, <laughs> uh, in the summer anyway. Because I think well, when we. We did May last it, time, didn't we? For our May yeah, show. So, yeah. So it, it, we maybe might. Around May. We might not be able to, so maybe we should make it for like the Black Friday weekend. Mm. So we might be able to do it for our winter show, maybe. We'll see how it goes, but we will set a birthday, a birthday day for Cambrian for seventy-five years because I think we did that with seventy, but and we'll yeah. do the same again. So, yeah. yeah. Kimberly says, "I think that's is that a sapphire, maybe. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, oh, time will tell." Uh, oh, champagne clinking glasses, excellent. Gordon says, for the 75th birthday, a 75% discount on everything would be good, winky face. Right. We'll we'll put this past Sarah, but I'm not sure yeah. what words will come out of her mouth at this at that point. So maybe we won't oh, mention it. I'm I'm reading on the screen uh uh naught dot Ah, no point. Okay, yeah, yeah. That makes That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. That makes more sense. Uh, may maybe we can offer a 75% discount on something. <laughs> Yes, we don't okay. make much profit in this game anymore, I'm afraid. So, uh, nice thought, Gordon from Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Sarah's just shouted up the stairs. No way to Gordon. Um, so no way. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Ian, I did suspect that that's what you were trying to say, but I didn't want to. Uh, uh, didn't want to say. But yeah, Ian is the same age as us. So happy birthday to you, Ian. Um, and then. Oh, yes, yeah, Steve says, what's happening with the project we did before Christmas? And Tina says as well, we are just trying to sort out a date with uh, Paul Sanders so we can get on and be able to go through that and put it on the website, etc. And then we can start getting it printed and things. And then, oh, yeah. maybe we can do another project similar to um, uh, this one where we do the, uh, what's the word? Gallery, exhibition, that's yeah. the one, exhibition, a 75th birthday exhibition. So we could do a book mm. and we'll get Sarah to write down all the crazy stories that have happened over the 75. Not that Sarah's 75 years old. Sarah is not 75 years old, um, but she has lots of good stories. So but we'll get those written down. Passed down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Um, and then, oh, Sarah, sad face from John Roberts. I think that's about the 75% discount. Yeah. And uh, he says, great, which I think refers to... Um, the Paul Sanders challenge. So, yeah. And oh, and Kim says the diamond, silly. Ah, okay. It's just because it looks blue. Uh, yeah, Di diamond. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. Before we, we get any more comments, we love the comments, but if we don't get on with the rest, we'll be here for ages. Yeah, no, indeed. Um, so, um, this is a section where we're going to jump over across into our uh, our training, which we're going to be doing over the next uh, foreseeable weeks. Um, you don't need to do anything to join the training. All you need to do is, is keep watching. Uh, we are going to switch over to it now. And just like that, we're in our training session. <laughs> Does this make us more uh, intelligent, Paul? I, th I think it does, yeah. Welcome to if anyone has joined within those last 10 seconds. <laughs> um, yes, uh, we are very to and happy to announce that we're going to be doing some training here at Cambrian Photography uh, on the Photography Out Loud show. Um, today, we're going to be looking at the, let me get my notes up, there we go, uh, the understanding of uh, of your photography of your journey that we want to do so we are starting from almost from scratch really from uh, with these uh, with these training sessions aren't we Joel so uh, we're going to be doing um, almost from the beginning and then working up into lots of different things so uh, obviously if you've just started photography this is going to be uh, an, an amazing journey for you uh, if you're well adverse within the photography stuff uh, you still might want to watch um, you can certainly help out with anyone that's watching 
so if you see comments pop up in uh, uh, in in the live, you can sort of help along there as well. Um, and also, you might pick up little things that we just forgotten over time because that happens sometimes as well, doesn't it, Joel? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so uh, today what we're going to be looking at is uh, the understanding of uh, why, what and how. Okay, so uh, why do we want to learn a little bit more about photography? So if you're joining here today, then you probably want to do something with photography. And I think it's, it's very important that we have an understanding of, you know, why... Um, we want to learn a little bit more about photography. Um, I mean, for for me, it was I wanted to become a photographer. So learning photography was was essentially part of the journey that I actually wanted to take. Um, but these can be these can be loads of things. So it could be something like um, I love generally taking photos so you might be taking lots and lots of photos already and you may want to you know start taking more um and you know you just enjoy taking photos and just getting into photography a little bit more uh, but just understanding that I, I love taking photos is is a really good help um you might want to start to get into photography because you want better quality photographs um, so this can be uh, You've this can been to a be... wedding, and the pictures don't come out right. You want to get them better, or you're you've got kids. I think kids is quite a, a big one, isn't it? When you you have your first child, or you've got nieces or nephews, and you just want to get better pictures, that's like yeah. a great reason to try and learn to understand yeah. something more. I think so. Yeah, it's you know it's, it's you know I want to get into it more. Um, I want the quality to be better. It, it doesn't really matter which way that you want to go. It's just having, a, you know, an, an understanding of, you know, the why. It, it really does help the learning experience. You know, especially for me, uh, it was, uh, you know, I wanted to become a photographer. So it was a case that, you know, I, I needed to learn certain things to to do what I wanted to do. So, it, it, you know, it wasn't like it was a hobby for me. I, I did want to get a bit more into it. Um, and obviously my learning experience want, changed. Does it count if you want to have better Instagram pictures and a better mm. profile picture? Of course it does, absolutely. So, you know, if, uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, we can, we can laugh and joke about it because uh, I think ultimately that's why I wanted to become a professional photographer. <laughs> <laughs> to probably take better pictures of myself um i just i just didn't know it at the time so and maybe still haven't admitted it um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so but I, f I think having the understanding uh behind it um and even just little things like it's you know it's always interested me so um you know i i might not necessarily like taking photos yet i might not want better quality photos because I haven't always even started on my photography journey yet. Uh, it might be a case that, you know, I've always thought I would at some point take pictures. So, and, you know, having this little knowledge uh, at the back of your head um, mm -hmm. really, really does sort of help, uh, we find anyway. So knowledge is power. Ooh. So um, you've understanding the uh, what is also important as well so um you know what do you want to take pictures of you know what is it that's important to you you might want to attach photography onto an existing hobby that you already have so for instance if you wanted uh sorry if you liked taking walks in the mountains and you're always seeing wonderful amazing views and you're wanting to capture those moments obviously photography is going to be a natural way of doing that so um you know that would be uh you know what interests uh somebody to get into it so naturally somebody if their hobby is walking in the mountains naturally going into landscape photography is, is yeah. going to help them um, so and uh you could you can apply it, you could apply this to everything so for instance if you're a bird watcher you know obviously you're you want to take the learning curve of wildlife photography so you're looking out for things like that 
Um, if you like taking historic think, um, walks in a city, um, yeah. it could I be. I think also, sorry, this lagging is awkward <laughs> when we're not in the same room yeah. together. Um, to yeah. Also, I think um, like with the bird watching one, and um, there's a lot of like desire for documentation, and um, yeah. and sometimes you can you can spot things you're really good at identifying, but you're you've not got the camera or you've not got the skill to to capture the image to keep for your own sake or or even to put on a an online forum or to be able to help um figure out how many of a certain species there are um at a given time and then also as you learn more about photography you'll be able to learn how to make the most of what you have as well i think that's important as well is to the more you know about the, the more you know about photography the better you'll be able to make use of the equipment you have so like bird watching is a perfect one with spotting scopes you don't have yes. to particularly have a great big lens you could already use the spotting scope you already own to help get great shots if that makes sense so i think that's yeah, an interesting thing to understand as well is that as you get into a, a certain genre of photography you understand how to make the most of it as well yeah 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 and um you'll also find that it's also a lot <clears> easier to learn photography if you're going you know you're naturally putting it with something that you know already as well you know sure. you know once again referring back to like the bird watching you know if you know the names of the birds and how they're going to fly uh, yeah. then you you'll know that oh this this bird is sorry don't know anything about bird photography um uh, <laughs> You know that this bird flies at a certain speed and this one doesn't and you know that'd be a really nice place to say you know certain breeds of uh yeah. of birds wouldn't it so a heron or a raven <laughs> yeah but or i don't osprey. even know but i would be are they fast are they are they slow i think I, ospreys I are pretty fast we'd ask, have to ask gary i don't yeah. know i would imagine they're pretty fast they're birds of prey yeah but um, i think it's um important to um understand that photography in some ways like you perhaps started with because you want to be a photographer there was a bit of a academic side to it where you kind of had yeah. to learn the, the settings and things but it was a broad range of photography uh, perhaps it you was. didn't specialize straight away but if you're really into bird photography and you never want to take a picture of a person then you don't really have to bother understanding portraiture potentially or you don't have to understand how to capture a running toddler um, or capture a nice landscape image because that's not what you're into. Uh, it's like um, astrophotography and nightscape photography is get, becoming more and more um, appealing um, and more people are getting into it given the gear is um, a lot easier to um, uh, get into and you can get better sensitivity in the camera. Um, but some people just use their gear solely for cameras i was speaking to somebody earlier and they said oh such and such was uh, not as good a camera as such and such camera i was like really is that like, yeah for astro and that's all i care about and, th and that made a lot of sense with the context that um you have to understand what you're trying to achieve because certain cameras might be the best in the world but they're actually really awful for um wildlife photography for instance like you wouldn't use a gfx 100 for um photographing a bird that's two miles away that just isn't no. a thing so no, i think that's important to understand not. that you can become very very specific if you want to and understand photography just in that line and not have to worry about any of the other side of photography i think that's yeah a part of and it. i think i think being honest with yourself as well um <clears throat> in you know little things like um because it does it almost gets slated a little bit with some people as well is is that you know i've i've seen a picture of you know a certain place but i want to go and take that picture you know is it that uh, tree it might be that tree it might be that <laughs> island but it 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 doesn't matter because if if that's what you want to do then and it makes you happy doing it then you know crack on it's all i did it's because my main thing is portraiture when i do like landscapes and stuff i just love going to the places that everyone's always been to because actually i've seen this wonderful place on a picture i actually just want to go there anyway and while i'm there i want to take a picture of it and i know that um 
you know, I've taken that picture, and you know, if if I was going to put it up on the wall, it was it was me that took it. Um, even if somebody probably did take a better photo of it, maybe. So, but you know, just just being. Uh, you know, just being happy with yourself that, you know, and, and that's the thing and just being honest and going, yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, and, you know, enjoy it, you know, don't, don't feel that you can't, you can't do that. But also you can flip all of that on its head as well and say that, you know, uh, you know, what interests me is that I want to, I want to create something new. I don't want to do that. Um, and it, this helps because, you want to try and maybe avoid those spots then because they are so pretty and that they can be that, that you know you, especially when you're learning when you're just getting into photography it can be very easy to just go oh there's the tree i'll just go and take a picture of that so you know if I you think, want to um, unique it's interesting you say that um because there's there's two schools of thought and then maybe a middle yeah. one where one says that if you want to learn to capture or, or make an image that's the same as that one you've seen it's the same in art where you think oh i want to be able to paint like the the masters so then you would you would study the masters and understand how they applied the paint to the canvas prep the canvas what colors they use what lighting they use etc so if you want a picture of that tree or that island or whatever that scene is that's really important to you because you love it maybe it has significance to you for another reason you don't want to photograph it um then being able to see what other people have achieved and think oh i wonder how they got those colors in the sky um maybe i need to figure out a different time of day to get that or is there a time of year where the sun or, or the light comes in at just the right place and it gets that it gets a really nice color across the sky then that's just understanding you may as well learn from what others have done before so that you can you can get to a level and then be able to get a bit a bit further along from understanding what other people have achieved. That's that's how humans always get better, isn't it? By looking at what others yeah. have, have achieved and then think, oh, I wonder if I could do that different or better or or try it in a slightly different way. Uh, but then equally, like you were saying, if you wanted to say, do you know, I want to create something completely different, um, but you can still have the ability to take Oh, I know how to use my shutter speeds, aperture, my camera, etc. because I did it this way and I, I learned a bit from that person. And then you go in and go, but I really want to shoot this um, subject with this gear or with this kind of editing. So I'm going to do it completely different to what I've ever seen done before. So, and I think that's interesting as well, because then you can combine the two, which is like my favorite part, where you get to learn from others, try your ideas, put them together and see if you create something that pleases you and might even please yeah. people um, in the future. So. Yeah. So, you know, just having an idea <laughs> of, of how that you're, that you're going to achieve that is, is, you know, is, 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 is really there. And the, the how is very important as well, because like, you know, we, we might understand, you know, why I want to get better at photography, <clears throat> Uh, and also what I love doing, but how am I going to get better at these things? Um, well, first of all, you can continue watching these uh, uh, these uh, beginner online workshops that we're going to do for you, and um, certainly that will that will help um, uh, getting into it. Um, you know, look on YouTube, look on Facebook. Um, we we were having a discussion about this before because we we knew that we were going to go down this direction and you know it was a case that uh learning how i feel and this is a comment that you made joel it it does need to be taken with a pinch of salt doesn't it yeah uh, even with us what we're saying yeah. now and and through all of the training that we do a lot of it will be just the facts a camera will take this picture because that's just how a camera takes a picture. But a lot of it, especially kind of the, the how, what, why, in terms of your mindset and thing, it's a lot of it's just gonna be opinion. A lot of people will say, you should get it right in camera every time. Get as much done in camera as possible, um, as little editing as possible. Whereas other people are the other way. They, they'll go and make their image. The light might not be exactly what they want. The crop won't be the way that they want. Uh, the colors won't be the way that they want. Maybe they want to, stack a few images together to get a certain style um or they want to do panoramas or whatever 
and, and that's perfectly fine because you do you and you do what you think will make an image that pleases you and might please other people. And if you, if you can take what people say, I think this is the same as in life, isn't it? Hear people, listen to people, take it on board and then decide what's important for you and not. And some things you might disregard, you might say, you know, guys, what you were saying, what we say in three weeks time, I understand it. I get why you do it that way, but I'm not going to do it that way because it's just not going to work for me. That's fine. And we're here to help whatever we can. And if we can't or it doesn't line up, then it's all good. And I think it is important to also understand that people on YouTube and in magazines have different um, experiences. Um, some have come from perhaps a film experience. So they used to shoot 35 mil. So they're very conservative with their shots. They still think in like 24 exposures or 36 exposures or even 12 exposures. Um, and, and perhaps people who are um, into digital are just used to going and they'll take 100 shots. And because that's that will get the shots that they want or they want to combine the images into a more interesting image that way. And I think it's important to understand that people do things differently because that's the way that they learn. And it's really useful to listen to to what other people do and then pick and choose the bits that you think are useful. And also <laughs> on the YouTube part, even though we're <laughs> on YouTube, um, some people um, don't always get it right. Um, they'll tell you something and it's not the way that it is. Um, there's been a few YouTube videos I've watched and gone, oh, I'm not sure that that's strictly true. So understand that some people make mistakes and, and we're all learning at different rates um, and that you you just have to um, know that you're trying to learn something and everybody else is learning. Some are ahead, some are behind. And if you can be humble in your photography and understand where you are and, and you'll be able to help people um, and other people will be able to help you. I think that's one of the things that I love most about photography, especially with that's online. Great if you find the right places, you can learn so much. There's a lot of people who are really willing to give their time and effort to you. Um, and you can really progress very quickly. Like you were saying, you went to, to college and things like that, to, or uh, yeah. you wanted to specifically learn photography. That used to yeah. be how it was. But arguably now, I think college is still a great idea because it gives you a lot of time and, and space to learn those things. But equally, if you can't afford it or you've got a full time job and photography is just that hobby that you want to do um, in the evenings, then YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and the Internet in general just has a wealth of information. And I would also say, don't be scared. <laughs> there's so much like photography, photography, you should do it this way, you shouldn't do it that way. Um, and there's so much information. Just just be chill and enjoy the journey, because ultimately um, photography is for you. Uh, yes. You might get to a point where people will pay you for your photography in whatever form that might be, or equally, you might never get to that point, or you don't want to get to that point, which I think is where a lot of people are. They just really enjoy it because they can combine it with another hobby, like Paul was saying. Uh, wildlife photography is fantastic because you're already um, going out to spot uh, wildlife. Uh, sports photography, great. If you're into like the, the Welsh rally or... The, or um, uh, motorbikes or drifting or whatever it's great or even if you just love going for a walk being yeah. able to go and go oh that's a beautiful uh, uh landscape i would like to uh, to to make that image and be able to print it off and put it on the wall or just send it to a friend i i love the fact that now we can send a picture of snowden to somebody who lives in australia and somebody can send a picture of Ayers Rock to us living in Wales. That that blows my mind that that's still possible. I know you could do it in the post years, but now you can literally take your your phone, take a picture, and send it on a, a yeah. WhatsApp. It's and awesome. what a nice feeling that would be if that's the absolute. You know that you've put your heart and soul into that picture, and you know that you've done the best that you can. You know, uh, <laughs> send a photo like that is uh, is just absolutely amazing um but yeah just to, just to resonate on you know just what joel was saying there you know take your time um don't don't be scared of the camera and um that is probably going to be um one sort of part uh, of advice that we're going to give today for you to try is um if you 
take you know if you're very new to photography and you know you've just got a camera uh, or you you know you've got a camera on your phone go into the menu go into what the buttons do and and all these things i mean you know my particular camera has lots of buttons on it and uh, which have recently been changed but we'll ignore that you know it wasn't are. me it wasn't me it wasn't me yes if you're watching mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um but understanding sort of uh you know what the buttons do and uh I've, joel i think you mentioned it before don't be scared it's absolutely fine maybe the first thing that you want to find uh within <clears throat> uh within the menu of your camera or your phone or whatever you're deciding to take pictures with uh is is how to actually just reset the camera first so you know that you can play to your heart's content um but it's it it is little things like knowing you, knowing the gear that you're using really really does help in the learning experience so yeah. i know that when i normally push this button and turn this wheel it does what i think it's going to do um and <laughs> that's uh that, that's that's really really helpful so knowing that you know this button this wheel does things um you know if you have just bought something that you can change the lenses on and off so interchangeable lens ilc camera um then there will be buttons and dials and things and you may not know what they do and sometimes they might not do anything so you know having the curiosity of um, you know, if I switch the camera on now and I'm on full auto on, on the top of the camera, turning these wheels aren't doing absolutely anything on the camera. So knowing that, oh, okay, so what do they do? Do I need to be on this mode? And, you know, what is what is happening? You don't necessarily need to know yet what's going on because we're going to help you with that through these little sessions that we're going to be doing. But the first thing that we'd we'd love you to do, and lovely just to just to get hold of, um, is just building a relationship with your camera, knowing that you can switch it on, knowing that you can get to the playback, knowing <clears throat> how how your menu is laid out. So you know this is the camera section of the menu, this is the playback section of the menu. Just having a rough understanding of how your camera is laid out really really does help and if it all does go wrong and you press the wrong button and it the screen goes blank for instance which happens all the time or you manage to put it in a different language i had that happen once i had to try and get a customer's camera out of polish over the phone that was interesting given i don't understand polish and they managed then to put it into chinese which was equally difficult because i definitely have no idea how to read chinese but you give us a call or a Facebook message or um, an Instagram message or whatever, whatever way you can contact us. Um, we're always here to help. Um, we've done it for years. That's why we've been going for 75 years. We're here to help you. So if you think, oh, no, it's all gone wrong, just give us a shout. We'd be more than willing to help you out. Um, because one of the things we always say when somebody buys a camera from us is just have a play play for a couple of weeks, then give us a call or pop back in. Obviously that can't happen at the moment. Um, and we'll help you because that's what we're here for. I think that's, that's pretty much sums up Cambrian photography is our passion for photography and our desire to help you get the most out of your photography. So do not fear the Certainly camera. Is. <laughs> Certainly is. So have a good play with the camera, like Joel said, and, um, uh, we will be doing these uh, these little mini workshops. I don't know exactly what we're calling them yet. So online yeah, I'm not sure. mini, yeah, like poll training sessions, but like yeah. bite sized chunks. Yeah, just so need to check with the BBC that that's not like trademarked or something or copyrighted. Yeah, we've mentioned we've mentioned poll twice now. So this is like this. We've never mentioned it live. So it's normally our little thing that we call it, isn't it? So photography yeah. out loud shortens to poll. So if yeah. you hear us catches saying that sometimes and that's what it is so it's how we refer to ourselves yeah, it's not often. the shortest name is it photography out no no it certainly isn't so um yeah no uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, joel yes no you're always here so <laughs> when do i no I, I don't need to thank you anymore because you're always no. here so yeah I think there was a point where i used to say thanks very much for joining but you know 
you're always going to be here. You're not going anywhere. So yeah, <laughs> I hope not. Um, no. Shall we quickly go through the uh, the comments before we say goodbye? Yes. Um, right. Uh, Steve says, um, "History of Cambrian in words and pictures would be great." That was from the the first part of the the poll session. Also, yeah. adding in outstanding photos taken each year by the staff or clients. Yeah, that'd be cool to see um, how uh, things have developed. If anybody has any old pictures of Cambrian or any of the staff that used to work for Cambrian, let us know. Uh, Happy New Year's, guys, from Mel. Happy New Year to you. Um, good to see you on here. Um, Yvonne says smack him, Paul. I'm not quite sure as to why she's suggesting that you smack me. It might be a comment about you at the beginning. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Yvonne can tell us why. I'm just glad we're socially distanced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just stay away from you. <laughs> uh, Helen has a lot of uh, different... Um, emojis there goodness me there's like a turkey a parrot i don't know why the box hasn't shown up a flamingo a swan a chicken a dove and a yeah. peacock i think so oh here we go cats among the pigeons <laughs> 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 That's great. Um, right and we're getting a, a present a 75th birthday present from gary i'll buy you both oh. a third excellent hey, I'll look that. Be good. yeah my, my son would love that we went, we went walking um, on the estuary in Conway with uh, some binoculars and we saw a heron and we were waiting for it to catch some fish. It took a while. Um, and an egret, I think, we saw somebody who walked past said it was an egret. But I need a book to tell me whether the egret, whether it was an egret. I don't you know see, what it was. You could, have, you could have stopped somewhere in that conversation. I'd have gone, Joel's doing all right, actually, with this stuff. But no, <laughs> you, you had to elaborate and say there was somebody walking past. And, yeah, uh, I'd be truthful. I'd be truthful. Um, oh dear, my light just ran out of juice. Well done. <laughs> Actually, no, that's my fault then, isn't it? Because I set up. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. This <laughs> uh, uh, afternoon, guys. Hi, Dibs. Um, and Mel says, "Well said." I'm not sure. I think that was about when all we talked about all of, it. all of it. All of it. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, <laughs> Mel says, uh, "Lol at the tree." Um, I think most people can understand the tree that we're talking about given it's not far from here and it's like the smallest tree you've ever seen and it's the tree that looks the just, biggest in every picture. picture yeah mel says no two images are the same 100%, 100%. Um, and i think that's what yeah. is fantastic about photography isn't it um that you can go to the same place five days in a row 10 days in a row 365 days in a row and they're always going to be different uh, in some yeah. way or another so, um and Dib said, so well said. Uh, I think that was about the images as well. Uh, Helen says, loving the non-judgy vibe. I'm glad. Um, we, well, Paul and I are hopefully some of the least judgy people in photography, no. um, just in general. We just we just love people enjoying their photography, and we want to help more people enjoy yeah. their photography. Um, you could take a picture of a blank wall, and I'd be happy. <laughs> so as long All as the you're happy. good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Helen also says thanks for the intro to She Clicks. It's great. Yes, um, we spoke um, a while back. Was it um, when was it? November time. Yeah. Um, and, sure. Yeah, and that was fantastic. Um, so definitely check out e She Clicks. Um, and uh, Michael says sorry for joining late. Not a bother. Um, good to see you. You can always uh, catch up. Yeah, exactly. Hashtag custom button change. <laughs> Yeah, Paul doesn't like that. Paul's like, don't touch my camera, ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tina, <laughs> Tina, Tina says uh, the She Clicks group is a great group as well. Um, and Helen says, thank you. It's such a nice, non-competitive vibe. Yes. I think if you can find groups that are into photography, um, whether it's on Facebook or um Flickr or any of the other uh, forums, photography forums, finding one that's non-judgy and non-competitive and just there for the enjoyment, it'll do you uh, no end of good in your photography. Um, it'll be really encouraging. Um, Sarah says, I'm missing everyone in the shop. Yes, I think Paul and I are as well. Uh, it does seem really bizarre. Um, being only right able to... oh, Is she angry and sad? Yeah, she's angry that she can't see customers and she's sad that she can't ah. see customers. I think she's expressing her um, various emotions towards not being able to see customers. Uh, Tina says, I miss you too. 
Yvonne oh. says, lol. <laughs> oh, here we go. Because you kept stopping Paul on mid stride with his speech. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's just I, no I, told, I told him to do that. I told him it's fine. And it's also I, I, awkward. I would, Come on. <laughs> it's awkward because of the lag. We're so it's... used to being next to each other that this is not normally an issue. Um, it's just really awkward to do it this way because there's too yeah. much lag. So we kind of, maybe we need a talking stick next week uh, no we'll just raise our hands. we've we've lost our we've lost the vibe joel because we got very used to sitting next to each other and we'll just have to get used to doing this again because i think yeah. at some point we actually we we nailed this the, this way yeah. quite well That's so we will get there so thank you very much for everyone bearing with us anyway yeah. so um the uh, eagle reintroduction wales link uh from gary uh so go and check that out 10th of february it says so have a look um Stephen Morris says, I'm thankful for digital tool as I wouldn't get a good photo with only 24 chances. For the <laughs> <laughs> I think if we're all honest, that's probably true of quite a few of us. <laughs> Certainly is for me. Um, Helen says, there are some brilliant bird watching apps with bird song recording and identifying. Great fun. Wow. I'm definitely going to have to get oh, one of those. Cool. Yeah. I feel like my kids would enjoy that, especially when they get a bit older. Um, Martin says, hi guys. I hope you're safe and well. Yeah, all good. Good to see you. Definitely. Um Steve says, hopefully creating images for future generations to see has always been the biggest appeal of photography to me. Never stop learning. That's an interesting point of view. I like that in terms of the historic side of it. I think that's interesting about street photography and um, being able to see different pictures and the way that people are dressed over the years. That's really interesting. So, um, Since Sarah Jones is 75 now, isn't she allowed to get a COVID jab soon? Oh, mate. <laughs> You're going to have to be careful coming into the shop. <laughs> wow. Shots fired. Good to see. Oh, oh Sarah says exactly. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well dodged there. Well dodged. <laughs> Goodness me, that was great. Um, thanks. Uh, Gary says, thanks for the video to USB. Top service this week, but don't forget to send link to pay. Yep. Um, I, I've saw, seen your email. I, I've had a crazy day today, but I'll get it sorted. Um, I'm glad we could uh, sort out that video to USB for you. Um, oh, and then uh, um, lol. It's <laughs> great. Um, and Tina says, don't you hate it when people say that's a great picture, you must have a good camera. Yeah, but that's obviously true because if you buy a really expensive oven, you become Gordon Ramsay, don't you? I thought that's how it worked. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and if you go to Ferrari, you're the best driver ever. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So... Uh, well, that's thank you. This is great. Mail order from now on. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Oh, I'm so right. glad. We'll, we'll, we'll let that stream of comments just sort of uh, just yeah. gather up there uh, because I think we'd be showing comments sort of uh, all night. So with yeah. uh, the, the back and the back and forth there. So uh, absolutely amazing seeing all your wonderful comments coming through uh, and once again thank you very much for putting up with us uh, it's always wonderful to have you here um like we said in the beginning uh, this is a live show so you can see us live um every friday uh, at 4 30 uh, but also with um uh, with the training section as well you'll be able to catch up at any point on the uh, on the YouTube, <laughs> I didn't know where I was going with that then. So on YouTube, uh, so youtube.com forward slash Cambrian photo uh, to catch up on any of the training sessions that we'll be doing. Um, and we will be sharing them and stuff like that. And obviously if you know anyone that's interested in learning about photography, uh, please share it to them. Uh, Cause not only does it help us, it will help them. So it helps everyone. So it's going to help everyone. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, anything else you want to say before we wrap up, Joel? No, just um, it was great to see everybody again. Uh, really miss seeing you all on here. Um, look forward to being able to see you guys in real life um, in the, the hopefully not too distant future. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday. Yep, we will see you next Friday for more news and updates and the continuation on our training workshop things, which we will probably have to name at some point. Until yes. then, bye-bye for now. Cheers, bye now.